life doesn't teach lessons. It's up to us to learn lessons. Which means that we have to take the initiative. We can't wait for life to come along and teach us what we need to know, or to have it automatically presented to us. And John Fuhrman stressed this point when I first went back to stay with him. He told me, you have to think like a thief if you want to learn the Dharma. In other words, don't expect everything to be handed to you on a platter. It's up to you to be observant. When you're listening to somebody talk, whether they're aiming at teaching you a lesson or not, what can you learn from what they have to say? When events happen in your life, when events happen to people around you, what can you learn? When you make this willingness to learn the basis for your self-esteem, that cuts through a lot of other issues. That's one of the few forms of self-esteem that actually keeps you open to change. Because for so many of us, self-esteem means thinking that basically we're good people, trying to look back on our past actions and seeing evidence of that. And then, of course, we run across things that don't support that idea, and so we block them out of our minds. We don't like to think about them. In many cases, those are precisely the issues that we have to learn from. So when you find that your mind has a tendency not to want to reflect on things you've done in the past, mistakes you've made. Try to look at what the fear is around that. Why are you afraid of looking at these things? Fear in and of itself is not a bad thing. The problem is when fear is conjoined with greed, anger, and delusion. It's the greed and the anger and the delusion that create the problem. After all, a lot of the Buddha's teachings are based on a very rational fear of the suffering that comes from aging, illness, and death. There's the word otapa, which means a fear of the consequences of unskillful actions. That's something the Buddha encouraged. He says it's a treasure. There's the word sangwega, which is sometimes translated as dismay or shock. It's related to an adjective, sangwega, W-V-I-G-G-A, instead of the V-E-G-A, which means terrified. You look at the way life goes, aimlessly on and on and on, and the appropriate reaction is a sense of terror. One thing leads to another, and many times it's hard to see exactly where things are going to lead. And as the Buddha emphasized, the only way out of this is having a sense of strong confidence and conviction in the principle of karma, the principle of action. And that requires that you be willing to learn what's skillful and what's not skillful. So when you see the mind refusing to look at things where you've made mistakes in the past, you have to ask yourself, what's being threatened here? If you look at that, oftentimes you find it's just your sense of your own self-esteem, that sense of, I'm basically a good person, I wouldn't want to hurt people. And then you look at things you did to hurt yourself, to hurt others. Or you look at feelings and emotions that you feel guilty or ashamed of. And you need the strength of mind to look into those things, because otherwise the consequences of not looking into them are even more piercing. So it's not an issue of learning not to have fear, it's learning what, where fear should properly be focused. And it should be focused on the idea that if you don't learn from your past mistakes, you're never going to learn. At least you're not learning anything right now, and in not learning anything right now, you're leaving yourself open to all kinds of mistakes in the future.
So look at that sense of self-esteem that wants to say, I'm already good, that wants a nice pat on the head. If nobody else gives you a pat on the head, you give yourself a pat on the head. Look at the price of keep trying to keep it shored up. In the sense of trying to protect that sense of self-esteem. when it so obviously is fragile. You're really setting yourself up for a fall, because we can't continue to stay in denial forever. Or even if we do stay in denial, that the suffering that comes from our actions just keeps coming back, coming back, coming back. We see this pattern in other people. As the Buddha says, the wise person is someone who learns lessons from other people's actions as well. It's that famous sutta, the, the quick, well-trained horse as opposed to the stupid horse. The quick, well-trained horse only has to see the shout of the whip, and he does what he knows should be done. Next down there's the the horse that has to see the whip before he does what he knows should be done. Then there's the horse that has to have feel the whip on his hide. And then there's the horse that has to have the feel feel the whip going in, cutting into his flesh. And finally the horse that has to feel the whip cutting into his bone. In other words, we have to look at the dangers around us not wait for them to come before we say, okay, I've had enough of this dangerous samsara, I'm ready to get out. Or I have enough of this particular way of acting, I'll have to learn how to stop. They say in AA that someone really has to hit rock bottom before they're willing to, to learn anything from the program. But that's just the way human nature normally is. And even then, people hit rock bottom and they don't learn. So it's more a question of your, your discernment and seeing what's, when it's time to give up your self-esteem that's based on a rickety basis and when it has to constantly be shored up to the, to the point where people suffer. You see so many people doing this, they suffer horribly just because they want to remain a little retain a little scrap of self-respect here or there. So take that lesson and apply it to yourself, looking back on your past mistakes you made. Don't be afraid to go there, because you realize if you're afraid to go there, you're, you're maintaining a delusion. And that delusion is going to hurt you further down. So it's a question of which sense of well-being you're willing to sacrifice, the sense of well-being that's built on this shaky grounds of already being a good person, or the sense of well-being you have you discover, you develop by having this attitude that you're always willing to learn. The second attitude is the one that offers hope. It's based on a lot more solid foundation, because you keep learning and learning and learning. So even when you're dealing with difficult things from the past, you have the attitude, well, at least I'm going to learn from this. That shifts the foundation onto something a lot more solid. So that you're not making your happiness depend on something you know is going to be washed away by the waves. And it's based on a much clearer eye, more clear-eyed sense of, of fear, what really should appropriately be, be feared. It's that unwillingness to learn. That's what keeps people blind. It's what keeps people suffering. 
and we all have it, and we all have to learn how to overcome it. It's only when we can overcome it that we actually start learning lessons. Otherwise, we go through life. The lessons are potentially there. But we want to be the kind of people who pick up the, the lessons quickly. Because the more quickly you pick them up, the less you suffer. It's as simple as that. And the suffering that comes from being slow to pick up lessons, or being unwilling to pick up lessons, that's something that's really worth being afraid of. The Buddha encouraged his son, Rahula, to take this lesson of being willing to learn at all times as the basis for the whole practice. Explain to him how to learn. You look at your actions and look at the results. When things don't turn out right, you talk them over with someone else. You're not ashamed to talk them over. Talk them over with someone who has experience on the path. Get their perspective. And then resolve not to make that mistake again. When you do things properly, you do something based on a skillful intention and then no, no unhappy results come, then you can take joy in the practice. This is where that sense of self-esteem is properly placed. Take joy that you're continuing to grow in the practice. And just that shift in attitude makes all the difference in the world.